Hello YouTube, welcome to another DMX tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about moving your movers. Moving headlights not only look really cool and add a lot to your presentation, but they have a lot of functionality in designing a light show. I remember when I got my first moving heads, I got four Chauvet Intimidator spots. And I was excited because they have totem mode, which means that the light stays on the dance floor and not behind the DJ or shining on the DJ. And the built-in sound active mode and auto mode was supposed to work really well, especially compared to other lighting fixtures. And I don't want to say that it was a complete steaming pile of garbage, but let's just say it was lackluster at best. I immediately knew that I was going to have to program my own shows. The easy part was mapping my lighting fixtures into a DMX light program. The hard part was actually deciding on what movements to actually create and how to do it. And so in this video, that is what I plan on showing you. Three different ways that you can control the movements of your fixtures. For this tutorial today, I'll be using QLC Plus. And this, these principles will work with pretty much any software but I have chosen this one and I can't say enough good things about it. And I'm having the DMX be sent to this external 3D visualizer, MA3D. I mean, right here in my studio, I literally have my lights set up right here, but the fans are loud and it's just much easier this way to show you. The first way to move your movers is with scenes. And if you need a refresher on scenes, look at my DMX video on scenes and chases. So I have four tabs here, and each one of these tabs represents one of these lights right here. So this tab right here, Intimidator Spot 255 number one, represents this light right here. And the first way to control your movers is by manipulating the DMX address. And each fixture will have a, a pan and a tilt. And pan represents the horizontal movements and tilt represents the vertical movements going up and down and this has a fine pan and tilt but if you look at the light it moves ever so slightly and it's not important now but it will be important a little bit later but if i manipulate this value right here see it's 85 now so if i increase it we see it moving and then if I move it back, then you can see if I decrease that value, then it is spinning the other direction. And I'm just going to reset that to 85. And then I have some other scenes. So this one's called in front. That means the lights are in front of the DJ. So if I go to this scene right here, it decreases the value of this pan, but it moves the lights to the left or well, i guess if you're the the dj it's your right but we're just going to say left because it looks left from the audience viewer and then if i click on right we should expect the pan value to increase with larger than the in front one which is true because in front was 85 now it's 95 and our lights are to the right and i'm going to do up and that should increase this tilt value and it does and so that is the first way, is having static scenes to move your moving heads. And static scenes are useful because if you want to take a picture, you can have a static scene already set. Some people like to have, when they have a configuration of four movers, have a couple on the ceiling or a couple on the floor. Or during dinner of a wedding, you don't want your heads moving around so much. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But if you don't, you can have a static scene already saved. And one of the static scenes that I like is when the bride and groom are doing their spotlight dance, their first dance, you can have the spotlights trained right on them. And I don't have it too bright because I don't want to blind them, but just a little bit really sets the mood. The next way to control movement between your moving heads is to have two static scenes and transitioning between them. I don't know if you noticed, but when I was clicking on these different static scenes, if you looked at the visualizer, then it created movements going from scene to scene. So I already have a, a chase already built with two scenes. So basically, it goes up and down. Very simple. 
but you can make it as complicated as you want. And so something to note is that how fast your scenes transitioned from each other and how long they stay at a location before moving to the next one is dependent on a couple of things. So on this one, I have the fade in and fade out set at zero. So that means it will do its, it will stay at the scene for three seconds, then transition as fast as it can to the next one. And if I want to change that, because maybe I don't want it staying set at a fixed location, then I would change the hold to zero. I think I have to stop it first. Oh no, it's just popping up on my other screen. Okay, so let me turn it back on. And if I change this to zero, it won't stay in, in a fixed location for as long. So you can see it's going up and down, up and down. And then maybe I want it to go a little bit slower, then I would have it fade out and fade in. And so maybe that's not the perfect way you would want it, but you can play around with the parameters, the fade in and fade out and the hold, and you can get some movements that you want. And so this, this only has two scenes in it, so you can add other scenes. You can have it go up in the corner and the other corner. It can go wherever you want it, and then you can create some complex movements that way. The next way to control movement, and perhaps one of the best ways, is something called EFX. And most DMX lighting softwares have it. I haven't tried every lighting software out there, but Show Express I know has one and it's really, really good. It's my favorite one that I've tried so far. But basically it lets you program complicated shapes and it lets you um, do cool patterns like this without having to create a lot of static scenes. Because if you saw if we had those scenes, we'd have to create so many of them to create a perfect circle. So in this way, it does it. So for you to be able to see it here, I have to do a couple things. I have to turn that on so you can actually see the lights, and then I have to select it right here. Okay, so as you can see here, I have my four lights, and they are not all moving on the exact same line. They are all staggered, and as you can see here, they're all moving around in a circular shape all overlapping each other and if I wanted I could change the start offset so that they are all doing the same thing and so you can have two different scenes that do that but I personally like the, the offset I think it looks pretty cool so it goes up to 360 degrees so I'm just staggering them by 90 degree increments and as you can see, this software, I think it's the EFX on this software is a little limited, but you can choose different shapes. And then the lights will do different things. So you can have a lot of these programmed. And what's awesome about this too is you can control how fast you want it to go. So you notice it's like a, a medium speed. So that means it's trying to run through this entire loop in seven seconds. So if I do 17 seconds, then notice like how slow they're moving. And I, I like for a slow dance or if you're just wanting kind of like a small ambient during dinner, this is what I would do. And I'll do another shape to show you. Let's do line. And notice how this line right here is not very straight. So let me straighten it out. I think I have to get rid of that. Yeah. This so wants me to rotate it. Still rotating it. But yeah, different EFX and different softwares will let you manipulate it differently. But this is just the way that this program does it. And notice that all the lights they are all going in different directions 
and it's giving you a lot of coverage. And notice how it's kind of above the heads of people, and sometimes that's what you want. But if you dim the light, you might want to shine it more on the actual people. Oh, wrong way. If you dim it, and something I like to do is I use my prism and then my dots. And it kind of gives it like a crystal ball effect. And notice that this controls how bright it is. You don't want to blind people, so if you're shining it right on them, you might want to dim it. But there you go, that's how you do movement with the EFX. Or you can choose a different line, like you can do a square. It's more of a rectangle. And let's say we want to make it fast. We had it at 17 seconds, so let's put it at, I don't know, 3 seconds. We want these things hustling. And so I think that if you're going to have it bright and shine on people, make it fast so you don't blind anybody. So that is it. Just to recap, we learned three different ways to be able to control the movements of our movers. One, we can create static scenes where we configure the DMX values directly to shine the light where we want it. Two, creating chases where we transition between different scenes to create movement slow or fast. And three, using EFX where we can create complicated geometric patterns just with some simple configurations depending on the software we use. So I hope you found this video useful and if you did please smash like and subscribe and share this video. Now we can let the battle commence. We'll put Chauvet's sound active mode on their fixtures versus my DMX light programming skills. Leave a comment down below and let me know which one you liked better.